Hey, it's Jeff. Welcome to SparkFun. And we're going to continue on our series of videos on basic robotics and basic embedded electronics. Today, what we're going to talk about is the servo. And I'm going to go through the basic functionality of the servo. I'm going to use some of the libraries in Arduino. And then we're going to actually write a little program to customize the functionality of the servo after that. So we're going to start with a small teardown um, on a simple servo just so we can take a look at what comes with these. If we go over and take a look at the small servo that SparkFun offers, it's clear, which is really nice because we can see the gear train and all the components in there. And next to this, I actually have a Futaba servo that I brought from the house. This is pretty exemplary of what's available on the market in terms of larger hobby servos. And these go all the way up to some pretty big servos that operate some pretty impressive forces. So this little micro servo has a sticker on it. And we're going to start by splitting the case. We can see the seam along the case. Uh, and this is an impediment to me getting in there. So actually what I'm going to do is just peel this sticker right off of there. I'm going to take my Phillips and back these screws out. So if I pull this apart, I can see right here I've got a control board. I got a small DC motor. I'm going to take the horn off the top of the servo. On top of here, you can see I have a gear train. This is the top of my motor right here. I have a whole gear train that runs over to this shaft. And then this shaft only turns about 180 degrees. Attached to this shaft internally, if I pull this gear train out, is a little potentiometer. And we can see my potentiometer right here. And it's attached to the output shaft on the servo. And what we do is send this a pulse train a square wave pulse train, and then compare that to where the shaft position is. And this gives us a feedback loop for position on the output horn of the servo. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've got an Arduino sketch loaded on here. And you can see that my servo is sweeping 180 degrees back and forth. And this is the cool thing about servos is that not only can we make a move, but we can make a move to a very specific place that has some feedback. So it says, I figure you're here. Um, this is a closed loop circuit. So uh, we get feedback back from the circuit through that potentiometer that we looked at in the internals of the servo. So I'm going to go through how I got there with Arduino. When I open my Arduino program, if I go down the File tab, I have Examples. If I scroll down through Examples, I have two servo examples that I can pick from. I'm going to pick the sweep one, and that's what I've got loaded over here. And we can see it's sweeping back and forth. Let's go through a little bit on the oscilloscope and take a look at what's happening here. So you can see over here that I've got my trigger and my ground hooked up on the same leads as my channel one and ground leads for my oscilloscope. And I've got my oscilloscope program open here, and we can watch if I plug my servo in, as that goes back and forth, we can watch the pulse width on the screen get wider and narrower, corresponding to the position of the shaft on the servo. So let's take a look at the hows and whys of how that servo operates. So we have these varying pulse widths. If I start in the middle with a one second pulse width, a one millisecond pulse width, my shaft is pointing straight up and down or 90 degrees in orientation. As my pulse width decreases, my shaft will rotate until at 0.6 milliseconds, it's pointing at zero degrees, roughly. And conversely, if I go the other way, as my shaft, as my pulse width increases, my shaft rotates the opposite way until at around 2.4 milliseconds on our oscilloscope, it's roughly at 180 degrees. I've loaded the knob sketch and the examples from Arduino, and you can watch as I turn this potentiometer, my shaft rotates in accordance with the reading or uh, what it reads off the potentiometer. So we now have a way of linking a sensor to absolute position on the, on the servo. We can also think of this pulse train as almost a blink sketch. And what I've done here is I've actually opened up the blink sketch. I've changed the delay time to the Arduino command microseconds. I've adjusted the timing so we're roughly within the windows that we've talked about in terms of pulse width and dwell. And my dwell on this is the time that it's off, which is about 40 milliseconds. So I put that stuff into microseconds in the actual blink sketch. I've added an analog read in the blink sketch. And you can see now I'm able to approximate 
the movement of this sensor. I need to do a little calibration in terms of my offset, but we have the same functionality homebrewed out of blank. So if you were working with a custom servo or a servo that didn't subscribe to the libraries within Arduino, you now have an idea of how to go about getting that to do exactly what you want it to do. So thanks for joining us today in this discussion of servos. We're going to put some adjoining materials on the page with this, and we hope this was helpful to you, and we'll see you next time.